Hello, my fasting friends. How are you doing? Are you hanging in there? As I record this, it is day 20. I know some of you are weak. You are tired. You are thinking about cheeseburgers. Some of you have been reading recipe books constantly, dreaming about what you will one day eat when you, when this time of set-apartness is over. Not that you'll ever be completely not set apart, but uh, you know, even the Nazarites, you know, even the Nazarites, they would. Uh, a Nazarite vow was not always for life. Sometimes it was for a season. And so uh, we embrace different levels of, for lack of a better word, set-apartness uh, in different seasons of our life. And so this season of your life, you might say, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to eat clean, I'm going to eat light, or I might not eat meat, or like the Nazarite vow was no alcohol, no wine, uh, <sighs> Some of you might just go all the way and say, no more cutting my hair. And <laughs> there's, there's all sorts of fasting. We, we just have to be led by our spirits in these things. But uh, I know you're looking forward to uh, taste your days ahead. But uh, I just want to say, uh, let's just keep leaning in. We've got, it's, we're, we're at, we're at uh, 20 days. So we're tw 21 tomorrow. Uh, we're, we're already at the halfway mark. We're at the halfway mark. And so, uh, praise the Lord. You're halfway there. I want you to see what's behind me. This here beautiful opening, if you haven't seen any of my recent videos, what you're looking at here is a very, very large clearing in the trees that, uh, that we made this week. We got, the Lord just blessed us with uh, a processor. That's a machine that comes in and it will it's like a million dollar machine it actually cuts the tree it in one swoop it cuts the tree it rips all the limbs off and then it chops it into like 10 foot pieces or whatever you want and then stacks it and you can see that over here i have hundreds of logs now because we we cut down 250 trees to make this clearing but then each tree makes like three 10 foot logs and so we have all these logs i got a massive stack over there there's hundreds and hundreds of logs and uh but the lord years ago he spoke to me about building an altar and uh building a place where we can gather his people and uh interesting in the days that we're living right now where gathering is now illegal and uh don't think this is going to end when flu season is over this is the new normal, and, uh, and uh, there is a, a new level of uh, persecution uh, and, uh, and difficulty when it comes to gathering. So it's going to be important in the days ahead uh, that we have places where we can, where 300 people can gather out in the wilderness and nobody, uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It's not like the government doesn't know we have this building. We're going to have a big, huge, beautiful uh, uh, altar to gather people, you know, I have to get permits for this stuff. So it's not like they won't know we're here, but uh, the reality is out of sight, out of mind. You know, when a church has a, right these days, you get a church with 200 cars in the parking lot, people driving by, they phone the cops, the cops have to come, check it out. And so we need places that are out of sight, out of mind, where we can gather and seek the Lord. And, uh, and uh, the Lord is, uh, he's, he's just leading me. If you think of me, pray for me, that the Lord will guide us every step of the way. Uh, we have this beautiful place. I look forward to you coming out here. In fact, at the end of this fast, uh, which is uh, May 23rd, May 23rd, uh, we're definitely going to have a gathering out here on this land. And uh, I'm going to, well, I was going to say I'd feed you really well. For those of you veggie fasting, I'm going to feed you really well because I'll, I'll smoke a brisket for you. Those of you who are water fasting... I'll make sure you got some really good broth to enjoy. But we're definitely having a gathering on the 23rd. For those of you who can come to Drayton Valley, I hope you can. We're going to gather, we're going to worship the Lord, and we're just going to enjoy each other, enjoy some good fellowship. And if the weather's good, and this is my prayer, pray with me. If the weather's good that weekend, I'm actually just going to kind of open it up and say, hey, if anyone wants to come a day or two early, come. 
and we'll meet, we'll have worship. I'll have some guy, some, I got friends who worship and who, who know how to take us to places in, in worship. And so I'll, we'll have some great worship leaders and, and uh, we'll, there'll be campfire going and wouldn't it be something Friday, Saturday and Sunday, a whole weekend of just gathering with hungry kingdom people, worshiping the Lord uh, around a campfire. I'll take you for, for a walk uh, through, this, through these trees here. I want some of you intercessors to just release your blessing on this land. Uh, it, it may be a bit of a, 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 well, we'll go there later, but uh, I feel like there's a, there's a, there's a time and it, maybe that weekend where we really uh, get the intercessors together and release God's blessing and a dedication, really a dedication of this land to the Lord for whatever his purposes will be. You say, what's it going to look like? Very much like a camp. That's what it'll look like. I'm, as I'm walking here, there's a trail. We've cut uh, trails through the trees now. This was just a big forest. I couldn't even hardly walk through here before. Now I got this great big forest. And so uh, with trails and so some of you intercessors, you're going to come here. You're going to get lost uh, in the backwoods here with Jesus. Not lost, lost, but just lost in the spirit. And uh, beautiful trails to walk. We're going to put benches in here. Maybe one of you has a commissioning from the Lord to create for me a beautiful bench that we can put along this path. Some of you are great at woodwork. I could use a bench. I could use a few benches. I could use a few picnic tables. But only nice stuff. No, none of your old garbage. And, uh, but yeah, we're going to have, uh, we got places back here for cabins that we built uh, we haven't built, but we've, we've, we've created, uh, we've carved out the land. So there's room for at least 13 to 15 cabins. And so I just know the Lord is going to help this all come together. He's going to put the pieces together. So pray for me that, uh, that I will just be led by the Lord in this process. Anyways, I got a great scripture for you today. But please remember, mark that on your calendar. The weekend of the 23rd, you're invited out to the wilderness with me and uh, and if the weather's nice we'll make a weekend of it and you can even bring your tent or there's a hotel about 90 seconds away so but uh scripture for you today is from psalm um 84 verse 5 okay and uh this is david speaking and this is what he says he says how blessed is the man whose strength is in you in whose heart are the highways to zion now listen to this i want to say that again how blessed is the man some of you are feeling weak you feel you've been fasting so for so long you have no strength and and the only strength you get as when you, f you find when you're spending time in the Word, it'll energize you. Uh, when you're drawing close to Him, He gives you the strength you need to go forward. But really, your strength is no longer in yourself. Your strength is no longer coming from food. Your strength I is actually coming from the Lord. This is the beauty of fasting. Okay, This is the beauty of fasting. is you, In your flesh, you get weak. But in your spirit, your spirit is being strengthened in the Lord. Okay, And so... As we fast, we are making a choice. We're making a choice to find our strength in Him rather than from the things of this world. And, and flesh gets weaker, spirit gets stronger. And the Bible says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And so really, it's, it, I've often interpreted that to say, mean less, less flesh equals more kingdom, all right? And so your strength right now, your strength feels sapped and weak. But I'm going to tell you something. Find your strength in the Lord. Press into Him in this time. Don't just be one who fasts. Be one who fasts and prays, and especially one who meditates on the Word. Not just read it. Memorize Scripture in this season. Meditate on it. Chew on it. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord while you're meditating Wait on the Lord. He who waits upon the Lord will gain new, what? New strength. That's what the Bible says. They that wait for the Lord will gain new strength. And David says, blessed is the man whose strength 
is in the Lord. And then he says this, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Now, listen to that. In whose heart are highways to Zion. Now, in Old Testament times, Zion was, was kind of another name for Jerusalem, but it wasn't just Jerusalem as a city. It was more like the kingdom of God. For those of you who have a revelation of the kingdom, it was the kingdom of God in Jerusalem. It was, the, it was more of a spiritual name for Jerusalem, and it really referred to the spiritual part of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is just a city with streets and buildings and people, and some of them are good and some are bad. Some are thieves and liars. Some are, are, are wonderfully uh, kind and sweet. And so Jerusalem as a city is a city. But Zion, try to think of Zion as being the spiritual atmosphere, God's presence and glory that rests upon that city. And so people in those days, they longed to go to Jerusalem, not because they missed the buildings, but because they loved the presence of the Lord that rested on that city. They longed for not just Jerusalem, they longed for Zion. Okay, And so they would dream, even just the road to get there, their, in their heart, they were dreaming about just getting on the road and doing their pilgrimage to Zion, where they would experience the presence of the Lord. Now this is all God through the Old Testament, he speaks to us today through types and shadows. And so what that means to us, how we can interpret that today in our new covenant times, is that the people who find their strength in the Lord, I'm talking to the fasting, praying people right now, that's the only strength you got, is the strength that's coming from the Lord. It says, blessed is the one whose strength is in the Lord, in whose heart, listen, in whose heart is the highways to Zion. Friend, I want to ask you something. Do you have highways to Zion? You should interpret that the word kingdom okay it's not about you necessarily going to jerusalem although maybe do that someday this is about you longing for the kingdom having a heart for the kingdom i'm seeking the kingdom i'm longing for the presence of the lord and a friend i want to tell you something god is blessing you god's blessing is only going to increase more and more on your life because you've chosen you have chosen to find your strength in the Lord. You've allowed him to carve highways to Zion, highways to his presence in your heart. And I want to prophesy that you're not only going to long for his presence, you're encountering his presence in the name of Jesus Christ. As you even today go into your prayer room and you meditate, as you just speak and pray in the spirit, the presence of the Lord, may it manifest in your midst. And may you see miracles, signs, wonders exploding all around you as you seek first the kingdom. That's Zion. As you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things are going to be added to you as well. And so it's going to be supernatural spiritual miracles and grace, but also going to be just miracles in the natural. I can't tell you how many miracles I've seen this week, even for building this camp. I had a guy call me up the other day. I said, Steve, I want to meet with you. I go to his house. He owns the Boston pizza in town. And uh, he said, when I bought this Boston pizza, this was just a year ago, he said, they forced me to renovate, even though the, all the booths were only three years old. They're all like beautiful, nice new booths. They forced me to renovate as just, you know, the, to, to, to hold you. So I spent $85,000 on new booths. But he said, look it, I got all the old booths, enough booths and tables to furnish a Boston pizza and the pub, okay? Nice charcoal. He says, Steve, I heard about your camp. I want to give them all to you. I got like $80,000 worth of furniture for our, our dining room, you know, for the camp. Now I just need a dining room to put them in. But, but the Lord is providing. I had someone else gave me the mulching. You know how much it would have cost for me to carve trails through these trees? Thousands and thousands and thousands. The guy did it for I think he actually lost money. It was, I don't even think he broke even. It was just, he was a Christian. I asked for a quote expecting this massive thing that I'd maybe wait or pray about for a while. And he basically said he'd do it for free. And so now we have beautiful 
paths. I can't wait for you to come and, and walk down them. They're all mulched and, and beautiful. And, uh, and God is just providing in so many different ways. I had a guy call me up and um, a businessman. He said, I heard you need a culvert. I want to give you a culvert. Uh, he said, it's 13 feet in diameter. And I said, what do you mean? You must mean 13 feet long. I need culverts, you know, for a little stream to go through. He said, no, 13 feet diameter. Have you ever seen a culvert that's 13 feet high? You can drive a truck through it. This would be like the perfect, and I could build a cabin out of it, but I mean, it'd be the perfect root cellar. But the, do you know how much one of those things costs? Obviously, God wanted me to have a 13 foot high culvert, you know? And God is just providing. He's bringing miracles every day. I'm just watching, you know, what, what's God going to do today? But He is creating a place out here in the wilderness where His name, where His presence will dwell. And so if God calls me to do it, God's going to pay the bill. But I tell you what, I have one thing to do, and that's not big people for money. That's not uh, uh, try to wheel and deal. No. My job is to live the kind of life that reaches through the veil. My job is to be the kind of man who can touch the kingdom of God. My job is to make sure that I have highways to Zion. Highways to the kingdom are filling my heart. And if I pursue him, pursue him, love him, enjoy Him, and live a life where I embrace the strength of the Lord, the strength that comes from the Lord, which includes living a fasted life, then I can live a miraculous life. Because when you seek first the kingdom, His love, His presence, all the other things are just added to you as well. And so friend, I want to bless you with that. I hope that was an encouragement to you. You have chosen to embrace the strength that comes from God, even at the cost of weakness in your flesh. You're going to see the fruit of it. You're going to see the fruit of it. And I pray over you right now in the name of Jesus that the highways to Zion, highways to His presence, will fill your heart and they will take you there in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friend. Be sure to make a note on your calendar. If it's sunny the whole weekend, come if you can. We'll, we'll really get to know each other. We'll have some good times around the campfire. But for sure, uh, on the 23rd, the last day, uh, I'll make sure that the food is phenomenal that day. But uh, just keep watching. I'll, I'll let you know more as we go. But that weekend, uh, we're going to get together. And if you can be here, we'd love to see you. God bless you. We'll see you soon.